what are we going to do today? Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to do a question and answer. Uh, I do get a lot of questions um, on videos and different things on the channel, and I try to answer them, but I just thought maybe um, this would help answer some of the questions. Hey, I think, you know, I just thought it might help, okay? Uh, these are not in any kind of an order. They're just on the, the comments we get on videos. I just jotted down some of the questions I got them in front of me because I have to read them because I can't remember, but I'll answer them. Uh, the idea for it came from a, a gentleman named Jeremy Hagen. If I mispronounce your name, I am truly sorry. Uh, but he did, he shot the idea out there, and I said, well, that could be interesting. All right, but first things first. Welcome to Stillworks in Bruin. My name is Randy, and this is a channel that's all about home distillation in Bruin. But you know what I need first? I need some pumpkin moonshine. I made this, what, last week? I think it was. And it is fantastic. I got me a jar, of ice, a glass of ice here. Yeah, because all this yakking, I might need something to. Uh, hey, and I think what makes it a little bit better is just a sprinkle of either cinnamon or this is just pumpkin spice blend that I made this with. A little sprinkle on top, just for a little extra. All right. So, let's get started with this. I hope this turns out, and if you decide you like this, just let me know in the comments, and then we could, we could do some more of this if you really like it. All right, so, I guess the first question I got is, and this wasn't on the website, but I get people to ask, how did I get into home distilling? Well, the answer is, I was a home, a beer, home brew beer for many, many years. Uh, I think, ooh, my son's 30. For right around 30 years, I've been a home uh, brewer, beer brewer. I love beer. Uh, and then we, me and my wife was on uh, vacation down in a wonderful part of uh, this world. It's called Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. And down, if you've never been there, it is fantastic. But anyway, they had a lot of uh, distilleries there, and you go in for free samples and all that. It was out of this world. And I just fell in love with moonshine, with all the different flavors. And, 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 and the, I consider home distilling a lot like the... the um, home craft beer boom, okay? When everybody started making home beer, homemade, uh, homebrewed beer, there were just so many different flavors coming out and different ways of doing it, it was fantastic. And I think Home Distilling is following their lead and they are coming out with some fantastic uh, spirits. They're, they're just out of this world. So, I fell in love with it. I started doing a little bit of research, and I said, I can do this, all right? So, that's how I got into home distilling. It was from a time on vacation. Okay, so the next question, it kind of goes along with that. Why did I start Still Works in Brewing? Well, back in the time when I'm, I'm learning about distilling and all that, uh, of course, I'm on YouTube looking up anything I could find, and they had some uh, great guys, which are still there, or pretty much, I think. I um, mean, you had Jesse on Still It. Um, he was making a lot of fantastic stuff. You, I think he throws some good information out there. Uh, you had George from Barley and Hops. I watched all his stuff. He was throwing out the information and teaching everybody how to do this. And of course, you had Bearded and Board. And uh, I, you know, after I was distilling for a little while, I, I, I figured, you know, maybe I could help. I wanted to come out with a, with a, with a channel that was very, um, 
uh, about home distilling with a very easy approach, uh, just to help to um, try to get some good information out there. And I hope I've been able to do that. I get a lot of good comments that I've, I'm, I'm getting, I'm accomplishing what I wanted to, uh, but that is my goal because I love to help people. Uh, I want this hobby to grow. Now, right as of right when we first started, when I first started, it was not legal in the United States, but uh, I think a movement is going on. And I think West Virginia, if I'm mistaken, just come on board where you're allowed. And I, Missouri? M Missouri, I think you're allowed. To, uh, West Virginia, just come on board where you're allowed. And I think Texas is like that close. I could be wrong, but I think Texas is that close. So the movement is coming. It's a great hobby. It's not dangerous. I just don't believe it is. Um, I think it's got a lot of mis misnomers about it. Um, so that's why I started this hobby, just to try to help people like the people I mentioned before help me. So if I can help one person, hey, I get a lot of nice drink out of it too, you know what I mean? Mm. Damn, that's good. Oh, that is so refreshing too. The way I like it, all nice. All right, so I don't want to yak too awful much. Um, and I just wanted to set me a timer because I didn't want to talk too awful long. <laughs> all right. So where we're at, are we ready to get started with some of the questions from uh, the viewers? I think so. Okay, so the first question I got is from a viewer, and you gotta remember these names are just what names that, you know, when they send over, some of them don't make much sense. B. Bird, that was his name, and Swamp Water Infusions. Th these two had the same question. And the question, and it was from the video, um, the the apple brandy and the peach brandy videos that I did. And the question is, how long do you leave the oak chips in the brandy? All right, my answer is, and I used oak chips, uh, my answer is, it's like three weeks and sometimes more. Um, what I do is, I put it in there and I watch the color. Because remember, everything comes off the still is crystal clear. And I'll put the chips in there and the color starts looking right. And then I'll start tasting a little, a little you know, just I'll take an eyedropper, taste a little bit. And when I think it's done, I strain the chips out. Uh, and that is right around the three to six week. I know that's a big, very three to six week mark depending on what you're after. If you want a real good oaky taste uh, you know, of the, the wood, leave it in longer. If you want a little bit less, you leave it in less, right? But that's, that's going to be my answer. Around three weeks will be my answer, all right? Okay, the next question, and this is from Tom, Tommy No Wiggins. Please, <laughs> I'm gonna butcher some names. Please bear with me. And this was from the video, Corn Vodka Mash. And the question is, at what temps do, uh, temperatures do I form ferment at? Well, that's pretty easy. And uh, you've seen me took video inside my uh, um, fermentation room. And uh, it is a temperature controlled in there. And I usually set, and I even did a video on the Inkbird controller. I usually set it between somewhere as 76 to 78 degrees. And that just seems to work out fantastic for me. I'll tell you what, you would like that. All right. All right, so that's the answer for that. I'll say 76, 78 degrees. Now, granted, there's, eh, not that I've ever made tequila, but I heard you got to uh, ferment that at a higher temp. So I like to keep that in mind. 
but there is different types. So it's up to you, but that's my, that is my go-to answer right there. All right, next question from Haji E5. And the video was Rise and Shine Coffee Moonshine. Oh, man. I might have one of them after this. That sounds pretty darn good. Now, I don't quite know this answer, but I'm going to answer it anyway. The, the question was, I am a diabetic. Could you use sugar and raw or brown sugar instead of processed sugar? Well, of course you can. Uh, even raw sugar might even taste better, or brown sugar might even taste better. Uh, but... Uh, I am diabetic myself. I just don't know if, and I just don't know um, if it would help your your sugar intakes. I, I just don't have an answer for that question. But yes, you could use different things. And I think it would taste fantastic. All right. Next question is from Knowles Smith. The video was the Rise and Shine Coffee Moonshine. Question, if I use French vanilla coffee creamer, do I back off on the uh, vanilla extract? Uh, my answer is no. I love vanilla. Uh, so if I have a little extra vanilla in there, it does not hurt my feelings at all. So I'm going to say no. All right. But it is a great question. And, you know, if you're on the, on the, on the fence with vanilla, well, yeah, you could back off on the vanilla if you wanted to use French vanilla extract. All right, we're moving right along. Okay, the next question, and this is from Hillbilly Trucker NC, which I would assume stands for North Carolina. All right, the vid was Rise and Shine, Coffee Moonshine. And the question is, do I use high proof shine or sipping shine? All right, so I would imagine in my, what I'm guessing the question was, uh, high proof shine, let's say 140 or somewhere like that, or a little bit more, and sip and shine uh, is, in my mind, is somewhere between 80 and 100. That's just me. Uh, most of the time I use uh, 100 proof shine and what I'll do is, if I want it a little bit stronger, is I'll just add a little bit more. You know, so instead of maybe a quart, maybe a quart and a half, or maybe a quart and a quarter. And it's going to be up to you. So that's that's what uh, my answer is going to be. All right. So next question, uh, and it's from J Dude something other. I, I'm sorry, I messed up. I just don't know. And the video is Rise and Shine, Coffee Moonshine. All right, and the question is, do you use grain spirits, sugar head shine to make your creations? Well, I guess you would call grain spirits. I like to use a corn-based um, shine. Uh, I just, my opinion, you know, is corn-based shine just has a fantastic flavor of it and i just think it complements you know any moonshine that you make with can you use all grain like could you use a uh, vodka of course you can uh could you use uh what do they call um um uh, everclear of course you can so but it just in my case i like you know corn-based uh shines all right uh, next question. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. All right, and the question is, Cunanehan? Okay, and, and the video was coconut rum. All right, and the question is, he is preparing a similar recipe and wondering if it would be okay to save the remaining dunder from a, this batch and consider adding coconut milk for a future run. Sure, <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. Uh, a lot of times in rums, you know that you put dunder from a pre previous uh, batch into it, so on and so on. Um, I don't see no problem. I mean, that's the great thing about this hobby is that 
and I've said this in the past, we're home distillers. We can do what the hell we want. <laughs> but yes, I think you could uh, add Dun Dunder using coconut milk. Why not? You could. All right. We're rolling along. All right. This question is from Dirty Bird. I can pronounce that. And the video was the peach brandy. All right, and the question is, adding kosher salt to a mash before it helps with puking. My answer, I just don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard of adding butter, oils. I've never heard of adding uh, kosher salt, so I just don't have an answer for that. Uh, if anybody does, please leave it in the comments. Uh, please help each other out. That's what this is all about, to help each other out. And he also asked for me to do a three-grain vodka from start to finish. Hey, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I love vodka, and I got a lot of friends that love vodka. Um, and I made vodka a few times, but I think I might add that on my list. Um, you know, do some grain vodka and be able to show... You know, from the very, very, very beginning, all the steps, all the way down to the end where you're enjoying a mixed drink. Sound like fun? If you like that idea, please leave it in the comments. All right, let's keep going. All right, because we're going to run out of time, right? What are we at? Okay. All right, next question. This is from Garage Brew. How about doing a sour mash? Well... Um, I've never done a sour mash. Uh, yeah, that sounds interesting. I think I might do a little research in doing a sour mash. Um, now I know a lot of you guys out there do sour mash. And hey, you know, if you want to, please send me a recipe and a little bit of directions, and uh, just send it to Still Works and Brewing at gmail.com. Hey, it sounds like a lot of fun. All right. Here we go. Keep on going because we're going to, I don't want to run out of time. All right. This one is from Swamp Water Infusions. This guy, he sounds good. All right. And the video was caramel apple pie. All right. If I remember right, that caramel apple pie was pretty darn tasty. And the question was... Have you ever had a problem with caramel separating? Well, I will say yes. Uh, I've made some caramel stuff, and it does seem like to, a lot of stuff, even it's like his pumpkin, you know, it will separate. Uh, but I'm in such a habit, before I ever pour me a shine, I'm always, I'm always shaking it up. Uh, and that's just me. Because I think the little bit of, a lot of shines that you make at home, will have just like a little, little fine pulp in it, and it will settle out. So, I, and I think that's where all the taste comes from. It, that's just my thinking, you know. So, what I'm in the habit is, before I pour it in a glass, I always give it a quick shake. All right, okay. Ooh, we got a bunch of questions to go. All right, this is from Kevin Hobbin. And the video was Lemon Cream Moonshine. Oh, man, I wish I had some of that left. Well, a nice hot day. That was fantastic. All right. Do you keep in... The question is, do you have to keep it in the fridge? Well, that's a great question. I normally do keep it in the fridge if I can. Uh, and the reason why... Well, I like it cold. But... Um, and I'm getting, I get a lot of, you do a little research on it, and you get a lot of different um, theories out there. And some people say it is shelf stable if you've got 2% alcohol in there, and some say it's 20%. Uh, or 20 proof on the shelf. I mean, yeah, in my thing, if I have it, something that is 20 proof and. Uh, 20 proof I'll put it on the shelf in a dark spot you know, keep the light away from it and I've never had a problem so 
that is a different question. Uh, if anybody has ideas out there, I think the alcohol keeps it preserved, you know? And I've always wondered that too about, uh, could you do some type of, if you were making, let's say the, this pumpkin moonshine, I normally put it on the shelf, don't have a problem, but what if you did a canning method on it? Yeah, like you can tomatoes, you know, you can tomatoes, it's shelf stable. I'm just curious. If anybody has any uh, experience with that, please let us know, that helps us all out. So, I didn't answer that one very well, but that's the best I got. All right, from D-Buddy, the video was lemon cream moonshine. Do you have to use powdered cream or can I use non-dairy cream? Oh yes, non-dairy is fine. Uh, I think I used powdered the last few times because I had it. Um, so, but I don't see no reason why you can't use you know, the liquid non-dairy. Um, so I'm gonna say yes, you can. All right, next question from Carl Van Astein. I really butchered that up. And the video was peach brandy. <laughs> He said, I see a screwdriver on the table. Did you recalibrate your refractometer before you started? Uh, and the answer, yes, I did. Uh, I like to keep a check on it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll check my refractometer against a, my glass refractometer, not back up, against my glass proof and trails hydrometer, uh, just to keep them in sync. Uh, usually if you have to adjust the refractometer, it's, it's not very much, it's just, it, it, but I figure why not? So yes, I did. Hey, good eyes. <laughs> I gotta be careful what I have laying around, right? Uh, all right, next question. And it is, the question is from Mike's Chicken and Garden. Okay, uh, video, peach brandy. What yeast did you use? Okay, I use, it was EC1118, it's a wine yeast. So that would be the the wine, or the yeast I use. Now a lot of times, I am a, a big believer in the uh, daddy's yeast. I do use it for a lot of stuff. All right, so we're, we're getting close to the end now. All right, question is, what size of mash do you make? Okay, me, myself. Uh, I like doing six gallon mashes. Why? Is because I have an eight gallon still, and if I do a six gallon mash, it fits perfectly into that still. Uh, and then I usually do, you know, one and run done. I don't have to do stripping runs and stuff like that, which there's nothing wrong. Um, but in my case, I like six gallons. And you gotta remember, in my case, when I'm making s different things, is I end up with, uh, let's say I'm doing a bourbon. So I'll end up with, um, you know what, anywhere from right around five to six bottles of bourbon. Um, and I got make a lot, I like to make a lot of different stuff for this for the channel, so I don't want too awful much, you know, to store away and all that stuff. So that's a good reason for me making the smaller batches too. Um, remember, I do not sell anything, so so if the revenue man's listen, no, I do not sell anything. Do I give it away? Yeah, I got friends. I give a lot away because uh, I just can't drink that much. Uh, but my good bourbons, <laughs> I'm hard pressed to give them away. Like that seven roots bourbon that I made, oh, whew, it is fantastic. And I don't like to give that away. Now I do have an ideal coming up and it'll probably be a few weeks that I come, it just popped in my head and I said, damn, that sounds good. But I ain't gonna let that out right now. I will let you know it's a bourbon and that's far as I'm gonna go because have you been around on the channel for a while, you know that I'm a, I love bourbon. That is my favorite. To me, there's nothing like sitting down 
in the evening and have me a nice bourbon. Okay. So there's the answer to that question. Woo! All right, the next question is from Katrina A. Franklin. I guess I said that right. Uh, the video was pineapple moonshine. And the question is, can you use frozen fruits if you cannot get them fresh? Oh, yeah. And the answer I got is, oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, and a lot of people say that you're better off to take your, fro your fresh fruit, freeze it, and then throw it out and use it because what happens is in the freezing process, it will break open the cell walls inside the fruit and you get more flavor out of it. So, yes, you can use frozen fruit. And you know what? A lot of times, uh, it, it's a lot easier, like mangoes. Um, you know, I can buy a frozen mango very easy. I can buy around me fresh mangoes, but they're just a pain. <laughs> so, yes, I will say the answer to that is yes. All right, next question from... Jason Acosta, okay? And the video was super easy bourbon. And the question is, how does oak chips compare to oak sticks? Well, that is a great question. And the way I'm gonna answer that question is, oak chips are a lot faster and you can get a lot of great flavors out of them. Oak sticks, you can get a lot of great flavor out of them, and they're a little bit slower, but you can get really nice flavor out of it. Uh, now, sometimes what I do is I'll use a combination of both. So I'll put, let's say, bourbon on oak chips for you know, a few weeks to a month or so, and then I will bottle it, and I'll throw some oak chips in the bottle and just let it sit, let them sit in there. Um, so. That's a tough answer for your question, but that's that's what it is. All right. Now from Noel Smith. Noel's Noel Smith. How about some uh, banana cream pie moonshine for Moonshine Wednesday? Hell yes, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, I made banana cream moonshine before. Uh, but you got to be very careful with it because it can get pretty thick. So I'm working on some ideas and we'll, we'll, they'll be coming out in the future of where it's going to be the perfect banana cream. All right. So, but I will say, yes, we will. We got that in the works of doing. We just haven't done it yet. All right. Woo. I need a drink. Okay, closing. I hope you like this question and answer um, session. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I love talking to you guys. Uh, so if you want, if you want me to do more of this, hey, put it down in the comments. You know, yeah, do some more of this or no, shut the hell up, or whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you do like it, please let me know. And if you have, if you do like it and you want more of it, put me some questions in. You just send them to me either in the comments or stillworksandbrewing.com, or blah, stillworksandbrewing at gmail.com. And uh, I'll compile all the questions. We'll do this again. Um, but like I said, this is how we help each other out by talking about it. Um, you know, and that's the fan thing, fantastic thing about this. All right. So please do, I guess there's one thing I got to say, one last thing, and that is, Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody.